There is a force which attracts all matter in the universe to all other matter in the universe. The fact that the material stuff of the universe is in motion prevents it all from crashing together into one huge lump. We call this force gravity. On a small scale, gravity is very weak. If you were to stand on an asteroid, you could jump very high and float gently back down. It would be hard to hurt yourself by falling. Here on Earth, we experience gravity at a strength of what we call 1G. It is a force which can be expressed as an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second towards the ground. You would probably survive tripping over a row of matchboxes, but a fall from a tall building would almost certainly kill you. We can't tolerate much more than about 5G. This amount of acceleration is not a pleasant experience. The gravity on the surface of the Sun is 28G. So apart from the fact that you'd be instantly fried, the gravity would squash you like a pancake. As I mentioned before, the motion of objects stops them from crashing together. Objects can be in motion, or orbit, around larger objects. Moons and satellites are in orbit around planets, which are themselves orbiting stars. Smaller stars orbit larger stars in binary systems, or, if the sizes are similar, they orbit each other. Or, to be more specific, they orbit their common center of gravity, their barycenter. Star systems orbit the center of their galaxies, and galaxies are involved in a complex dance which is far slower than this animation would suggest. The distances and time scale mean that we can look at galaxies from one decade to the next and not see any movement. So how do we know they are moving at all? Well, briefly, it is inferred through the redshift and blue shift of their light. We can tell which part is moving towards and away from us. I shall return to this in future videos. An interesting thing about gravity is that it dictates the shape of large solid objects. All stars, planets and large moons are spherical. In general terms, matter is not strong enough to remain in irregular shapes if it is part of an object more than a few hundred miles across. The largest object in the asteroid belt, between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, is Ceres. It is about 600 miles across and could be described as a planetoid. This is what it would look like next to the Earth and our Moon. Smaller asteroids are less spherical. Mars has two tiny moons called Phobos and Deimos, which could well be captured asteroids. Gravity can pull objects from one orbit to another. If an asteroid happens to pass too close to a planet, it can crash into that planet or end up orbiting it. The maths involved is too complex for me to explain, but it is possible to understand the basic principles without too much maths. Something which is relatively easy to understand is the inverse square law, which describes the strength of gravity at different distances from a star, planet or moon. Here is a thought experiment. Imagine a moon which looks like a giant golf ball. At every dimple there is a laser pointing straight up. If you are close to the moon, you will have many laser dots on you. If you are further away, you will have fewer dots on you. The more dots, the stronger the gravity. Due to the stronger gravity closer to a star or planet, a planet, moon or satellite must travel faster to remain in a stable orbit. It takes the Earth one year to orbit the Sun at a speed of 66,625 miles per hour. Saturn is nearly ten times further from the Sun and takes 29.46 years to orbit at a speed of 21,576 miles an hour. Albert Einstein published his general theory of relativity in 1916. It still contains the best description of gravity we have. Galileo, Newton, Kepler and others were among the first humans to calculate the strength of gravity and the maths behind elliptical orbits. 
we still use Newtonian physics, even though Einstein refined and improved upon it. That's because Newton's laws of motion are very close to what we observe, especially on a local scale. A brief summary of the relevant parts of general relativity is that gravity and acceleration are indistinguishable. If you're in a lift or elevator, for my American friends, which was in free fall, you would experience the weightlessness of space until you hit the bottom of the lift shaft, that is. Now if you have the same elevator in a rocket in space with the floor facing the engines and you accelerated the rocket at a constant 1g, you wouldn't be able to tell that you weren't in a building on Earth waiting for the doors to open. The important thing is that you can't feel whether you're in constant motion or not, whether there is a force acting on you or not. So gravity and acceleration are basically the same thing. A straight line and a curved line are hard to tell apart on a local level. The edge of your house might be a straight line, but if you extend that line along the ground far enough, it will form a giant circle. But you'll only know it's a circle if you can see the whole planet. According to general relativity, objects move in straight lines through space and time, unless something like gravity affects them, and we can then conclude that space-time is in fact curved by objects with mass. Gravity is the curvature of space-time. This is another subject I plan to return to in future videos. Despite what we do know, gravity is the least well understood of the four physical forces. The mechanism of the attraction of matter at a quantum or subatomic level still holds mysteries. You might be wondering why there is so much physics in an astronomy video. In order to understand what's going on in the world of astronomy, you need to know some physics. There is a lot of overlap between the two subjects. It's often referred to as astrophysics. The successful unification of general relativity and quantum mechanics still eludes physicists.